we're going to be doing some odd problems in chapter 5, section 4 that deals with complex numbers. We have to also know how to simplify things dealing with imaginary numbers. Number one, we're going to break this down into its prime factors. So what I'd like you guys to do, is I'd like you guys to change this radical into the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of a times a times a. And you're going to list b four times for this example so you understand the concept. Now, when you guys are doing these problems on your own, you don't have to do show all this work, but you need to understand the concept in order to solve this. Now, we know that the square root of 36 breaks down into a 6 and a 6. This is a perfect square. So, the square root of 36 is simply 6. What does the square root of negative 1 always equal to? Nope. Pi. Pi by itself. Okay? Now, if you guys can't see a number inside of the radical, it's understood that that index is referring, or that number, which is called the index, just remember, that's going to be considered to be a 2. So if you don't see a number there, assume that it's a 2. That's a square root. That's what it's called. All right? What does that let us know? It looks for groups of 2 or pairs. So I'm going to group. Automatically, if we have a times a, which is a squared, what is the square root of a squared? That's a over a. And what is the square root of b to the fourth? That's going to end up being what? b squared. We have b squared. So all these are being what? All these are being multiplied together. What's still left inside of the radical that didn't get pulled out? We have one little a right here that was left inside. Okay. Now, I want you to understand that when we put this together, we're going to have a 6. We're going to have an i. We're going to have an a. And we're going to have a b squared radical a. There's one thing that I'm going to do that's going to be a little confusing. At first, we'll explain why it is. One of these right here. This variable is going to require an absolute value bar on either side of it to ensure that it stays positive. And I need to explain to you why and when to do this. Okay? What we're doing is we are ensuring that our answer is positive. Right? We, have, we want to make sure our answer is positive. So I'm going to make a little statement here. I want you guys to put this in your journal. Okay? You need to use absolute value when your index for your radical is even. Stop us real quick. Our index, what number is our index right here? Our index, even though we can't see it, is a so if our index was a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, any radical that has an even index, you have to worry about absolute value. Okay? So use that to, when your index for your radical is even and, here's the second part, and the exponent for any variable not numbers, what are variables? Letters, right? A, B, C, X, whatever's on the outside, okay? For any variable on the outside of the radical is odd. Key word. Index is what? Index is even, but the exponent for the variable is odd. What's the variable for my, right, what's the exponent for my variable right here? The number 1. So odd numbers are what? 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. Even numbers, 2, 4, 6, and keeps going. All right? 
Now this might be a little confusing at first, I understand, so we're going to do one more example problem to help you guys see when you use it and when do you not have to worry about using it. Okay, so I'm going to go and pause right now so that you guys can write that down. Alright, so I'm going to transfer our answer. Our final answer for this was 6i, and then what did we put? We put the absolute value of a, and there was b squared, and inside of the radical, what did we have left over? We just had 1a left over. That was one of the most more difficult problems, not because of, basically because of applying the absolute value. So here is another example of when you would need to use an absolute value. So here we go. Just put this in your journal. This is not one of your problems. Put this in your journal. I'm going to say x to the fifth power, y to the seventh power. Even though we can't see it, what's the index right here? Two. If that's a two, what does that let us know that we're dealing with what type of index? An even index. So here we go. x to the fifth, I want you to write as Five extras being multiplied together. And yes, for this particular problem, once you guys get this concept, you don't have to list all these out, but you got to think about how many pairs you have inside of them. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And what do square roots look for? Groups of what? Groups of two. Okay? One, two, three. All right, so we can pull out. We can pull out another. We can. How many um, x's can we pull out? Two of them. So we can pull out an x here and an x here. What is x times x? X squared. We can pull out a y. Pull out another y. And pull out another y. Pull out another y. What's y times y times y? Y cubed. What do we still have left inside of the radical? An x and a y. However, which one of these would require an absolute value bar surrounding it? The y cube, because it's an odd exponent. Okay? So since it's odd, now I've ensured that my answer has to be positive. I don't care what you put in there, Zach, right there. You put in a negative, it's going to make sure that answer is positive. So right here, this would be your final answer. If I ask you to simplify this. Okay? Alright, moving on. Number three. How to deal with fractions and radicals. Alright, whenever you guys have a fraction inside of a radical, I want to let you know you are allowed to break it down by putting the radical of the numerator over the radical of the denominator. Now, when we do this, we're allowed to simplify that radical 49, and that just becomes a 7. And then we're left with the radical of 550 times x. Now, this can't be simplified, the denominator can't be simplified into one. But we can break down 550. Let's break down the 550 to two numbers. So where's the factor of 550? I think it's 55 and 10. 55 can be broken down into an 11 and a 5. A 10 can be broken down into a 5 and a 2. So right now, everybody, underneath the radical, we're going to list all of the prime factors of 2. A 5. A 5. And an x. What do all of these represent? These represent the prime factors. You want the x's, but the 2, the 5, the 5, and the 10. Those represent the prime factors. All of those numbers are prime numbers. And they only can be what? Multiplied by 1 and itself. Go ahead, Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I must have said it. It's supposed to be 11. My bad. No. It's supposed to be 11. So 11 is. I meant to list 2, 5, 5, and then 11. Now, radicals look for what? Pairs. Are you ready? We have a pair. So what can, what can be pulled out of this? A 5 can come out, 
What's still left on the inside? A 2, an 11, and an X. So we're going to put 22X. Let's see if I'm plugging in 22. This is what the numerator is, buddy. This is what the numerator simplifies to. So we're at 5, radical, 22X over 7. Now, I can't break this down anymore. All right? I can simplify this simply because there was a pair of fives. Okay? The square root of 25, because that's the problem, but it becomes a problem. This is your final answer. Totally simplified. Five. All right, now we're going to find the final simplified product of this right here. What I'd like you guys to do when you start this is focus on your coefficients in front of the i, which are a negative 3, a 4, and a negative 5. Focus on those first, all right? A negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 4 times 5 ends up getting us to a 60. Yes. i times i times i gets you to i cubed. But by the way, when you guys look at your chart, what is i cubed actually equal to? Negative i. So, I need you guys to understand, whenever you see something like i cubed, I need you to replace it with a 1. So right here, we're going to replace this with a negative i. So it's going to be 60 times a negative I, and our final answer is negative 60 I. What was your simplified answer? So if you ever got, if you ever see an I squared or an I cubed or what, an I to the power of 4, we have to change it into its simple, most simple form. Okay? So yes, I by itself, everybody, I is just I. Yes, it is equal to the square root of negative 1, but I to the third is Negative i. We already did number seven, so we're going to go ahead and move on to number nine. Number nine is the easiest problem. Very don't overcomplicate things. You have a seven, you have a negative six i, you have a nine, and you have an eleven i. Wouldn't it be nice if all you had to do was find your like terms and add them together? That'd be well, what did I say? Math is full of reason and logic. Alright? You don't like math and don't like reason and logic. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So, well, let's combine them. Let's see if you like this. Just combine those together. The blue. The blue. Mm -hmm. 16. What's a negative 6i and a positive 11i? Positive 11? 5i is correct. By the way, everybody, this is your final answer as a complex number. Why do we consider it complex? Because it's in the form of A plus BI. Very, very, very important. When you guys write your answer, what do I want up front? I want your real number up front. And I need your imaginary number in the back. If you're going to write it in the correct form. Real numbers up front. Imaginary numbers in the back. <coughs> okay. By the way, number 11 is just like number 9. I'm not going to finish this problem, but just so you guys know, it's going to be 28 minus 4i, but you're going to have to distribute a negative to both numbers. You better make that a negative 10 and a positive 30i, and I'll let you guys simplify that on your own. <coughs> 